folks, today we're going to be talking about some wave interference. Wave. Folks. All right, folks, so today we're going to investigate how waves interfere with each other using this huge water container. Okay, so I'm going to show you how waves can constructively interfere, destructively interfere based on whether they're in phase or out of phase and how much they're in or out of phase. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, a bit of a discussion here as I fill up this water container, as I fill this up with this massive hose, you can see there's a lot of disturbance going on in the water. In particular, there's turbulent flow going on in the water. Turbulent flow is the opposite of laminar flow. Laminar flow is when water flows very nicely very symmetrically in a very orderly symmetric contained fashion here you can see that's completely not the case right water is all over the face uh, it's it's spewing out and let's see what happens when I induce some waves in the container all right so now you're looking at these wave motions in real time if we slow it down you can see the actual interference between the waves and now let's completely pause this simulation and see what's really going on in the map but so you can tell that the water waves are propagating right so they're propagating outside and the radius of these water waves is increasing but what's actually happening with these wave interferences well to understand that let's say we have some waves let's say i have a water wave a and a water wave B. Yeah, I know, I know, water waves are longitudinal and all that, but I'm just using some transverse waves to illustrate my point. Now, you can see that these two waves are completely in phase, right? They're completely in sync. So their crests plus crests would add up with each other and their troughs and troughs would add up to each other. And it would create a third wave, C. And this wave C would be A plus B. And you can see its amplitude, the amplitude of wave C is the sum of the amplitudes of waves A and B. But on the other hand, if B was a bit different, if B was instead eh, maybe 180 degrees out of phase from wave A, we'd have a completely different scenario, right? The waves of the crest of a would match up with the troughs of B and the troughs of A would match up with the crests of B and so the peaks of A would match up with the valleys of B and vice versa and so you'd end up with this C. This C has nothing. There's no water waves here because these two water waves completely destructively interfere. And that ladies and gentlemen is the physics behind wave interference. And now let's enjoy the last few moments of the water waves interfering. And we're done.